Hello there, today we are taking a look at Bomb Squad, which is published by Tasty Minstrel Games and designed by Dan Keltner and David Short. Uh, this game is about a bomb squad, the Retro City Bomb Squad, uh, where you are trying to save innocent people, you're trying to save hostages and defuse bombs. You have your own squad and your robots, which will help you in that matter. So let's fight the terrorists in this game. Let's take a look how the game works. Bomb Squad is a real-time game and the time depends on the mission that you choose. Here we have the book, uh, different missions, and the missions go up in difficulty throughout the book. And the information that you have here is of course the map setup. Then we have the success criteria, which says how to succeed the mission. Also, there are objectives, for example, uh, the detonations of bombs that you need to defuse before the time runs out for the first bomb and second bomb, some special instructions, and of course the scoring, which uh, will be scored if you succeed the mission. Let's take a closer look at the map tiles. Here we have a robots who will enter from this space right here. We have the red and yellow hostage, we have the red and yellow bomb and of course the red and yellow doors. The interesting part here is in order to open a particular color door you need to rescue the hostage of the same color. So in order to open the red door I have to rescue the red hostage. Each mission will tell you what robot you should use during that mission. For example here we have Felix and each robot has information like the main battery, reserve battery and a special ability. Felix doesn't have any special ability here, but he has a really high capacity main battery and reserve battery. Whenever you use the robots, you will lose the battery. When the main battery goes to zero, you will use the reserve battery. The interesting part is that you can charge the main battery, but the reserve battery cannot be charged. And whenever the reserve battery goes to zero, you will lose immediately. There are two more robots in this game. For example, here we have Stretch. Stretch has a really low capacity main battery. He starts at 6 and he can go maximum up to 10. And reserve battery is only 4. But he has a special ability. For example, here he has May Reach tiles, one space away, not diagonally, not through objects or walls. And he has auto activation at four cards instead of seven. I'll talk about auto activation a little bit later. The other robot here is uh, Bumper. He has a better capacity main battery and he has another cool special ability here. So this will be used during a particular mission which will tell you that you should use that robot. This deck consists of different colored cards. And each color has four different actions. It has disarm bomb, move, rescue hostage, and then open the door. So, uh, the difference between the colors is that the movement is different. And uh, here we have a move one card, which is red. The uh, yellow move is two spaces, and the blue move if, is three spaces. The second difference is that because the blue cards are a level 3 cards, they are more rare, which means there's less of them in the deck. And the most in the deck are the red cards. And something in between are the yellow cards. So you will use these cards during the course of the game in order to do all the things like disarm bomb, rescue hostage, open the doors and so on. So how, how the game is played? At the setup, each player will get a certain amount of cards depending on the player count. Let's say it's a two player game, so each player will get uh, six cards. Then instead of looking at these cards, you will show them to another player and you should not see what cards you have. Basically a Hanabi mechanic. I will show them for now. Let's say it's another player's hand. So, and during your turn, you can use the cards, you can give intel, you can discard them for extra battery or you can activate the robot. The first thing is that you can give intel to another player. How you do that? You can either hint at a color or 
at a action, at an action on the cards. For example, I can say that these four cards are movement cards. Or I could say these three cards are red cards. So, as you will get the intel, you will realize what cards you have in your hand. Because the second thing that you can do is to program the robot. Uh, the cards are like that. And you will just program it by taking a card and putting it face down to the battery slots right here under. That's, that's, the, that's another thing that you can do on your turn. One more thing that you can do on your turn is to discard the card to gain more battery. Because over the course of the game, if you will activate robot and use the robots, the battery will go down and you need to recharge it. In order to do that, you need to guess a card that you are discarding. You can guess one attribute out of two, which is color or action, or you can uh, try to guess both and get two battery. If you guess only one attribute, you get one extra battery. So for example, I can say this is a yellow card. If I discard it and it's a yellow card, we'll get one extra battery. If I say it's yellow move, I guess right. If I, if I guessed wrong, nothing happens. I just discarded the cards. So let's say there are some programs already put down here. Now, the other option is to activate robots. By activating, you will reveal all the cards that were put here by every player. Now you have an option to discard one card, but only if you have up to five cards in here. As you can see, there is no discard here, which means if you have six programs or seven programs, you cannot discard any card here. But let's say I see we don't need a yellow open door right now, so I'll discard it. And then I can sort the cards how I want them to be. So I can put this and this first and then the open the door uh, next, like, or uh, sorry, last. Then we will do all the programs that were on here. The interesting part is that Whenever you use a movement card, it should be in a straight line. For example, free movement cannot be like that. You need to go in a straight line. That way or that way doesn't matter, but you need to go on a straight line. If there is a card in a program that you cannot do, there will be error and the robot will uh, use up extra battery, which is really bad. And the main battery which will be used is under here. Let's say for the four cards, you, you will use seven battery. For only one card, you will use four battery. So that's how it's all played. And what you're trying to do, you're trying to do the mission, depends on uh, success criteria. But here, for example, you're trying to rescue hostages. You need to be near the hostage and then have the program to rescue hostage. You can rescue the hostage here. You have to disarm the bomb and then open the door here. Come in here, rescue the yellow hostage, open the yellow door because in order to open a particular color of door, you need to rescue the hostage of the same color. And then you will uh, disarm the yellow bomb here. And if you did all that in a certain amount of time that was given to you, you will win the game. But let's take a look at one more cards that are in the game. You have an option to use special ability cards here. You will give one card to each player at the beginning of the game and the special abilities are really cool. For example, here is the programmer and his special ability is that your hand size is increased by one for the duration of the mission, which is really cool. You have always one extra card. So here we have Surgeon Carl Adler, whose special ability is when you take a play action, you may do so using the top card of the discard pile. So you can basically uh, uh, program your robot using the discard pile. And there are some more different, like Driver, Soul Hopper, Sofia, Petrescu, and so on. There are so many different ones. Some of them are more difficult to use, some of them are easier to use. 
and you use them during the course of the game and they are really cool I think for me they are essential to use because they give you something extra and make the game a little bit easier because the game is really really hard the last thing I want to talk about is the app that you will use with this game here you will go into campaign you will select the mission let's say it's a training mission alpha then you will click start and it will show you basically the setup for the bombs so the first bomb the red bomb will detonate in eight minutes and the second one is in 16 minutes when you press start it will start with the music and the time will go so you have to disarm the first bomb whenever you disarm the bomb you will click on here yes the first bomb is disarmed it's all done and then you will basically rescue your next hostage and go to the second bomb and whenever you disarm the second bomb it's all done and the mission is completed it's a really simple app but it's a really good timer it gives that music that tension a little bit as well and you can basically look at how much time you have for each bomb to disarm which is really cool so that's a bomb squad you can get it for free uh, in the App Store on Apple or in Google Play on Android I have a Android system here so this is an essential part of this game but a really easy one basically a timer for this game so what do you think about Bomb Squad? Uh, first of all um, component wise it's a standard TMG box uh, sturdy box with quite thick cardboard inside the cards are nice although I don't like the black borders I just don't like them at all because they wear off um, the other thing is that if the cuts on the tile map, map tiles is not perfect then the puzzle that you put together when you set up the game might be a, like it's, it would be hard to push all the puzzle pieces in I mean that 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 thing there but it's a minor thing otherwise component wise it's a great production here it plays uh, from two to six players at two players I think it might be a little bit too difficult if you play with more players it becomes a little bit easier and becomes I think even cooler at least in my opinion it's a fast game where you choose the mission and the missions are 16 minutes or 30 minutes and there's no downtime because it's a real-time game so um, the, re re the real-time aspect here is really cool where uh, when you put up this uh, this app and uh, the music music starts going you feel like the time is ticking the bomb is ticking and you need to go and defuse the bomb and rescue hostages it's really cool and that's where the cooperative play comes in as well where you feel all in you're like you you are all in this game you are all doing a equal part in this game there's no alpha gaming in this game at least in my opinion because on your turn you need to decide quickly whether you give a clue or you program a robot or you discard a card for for an extra battery you cannot talk too much there are restrictions on uh, what you can talk about um, in the game during the game so it's all really cool uh, bomb squad uh, blends together the hanabi Hanabi mechanic where you show the cards to others but you don't see them yourself and the robot rally aspect where you have your robot and you basically try to program your robot manipulate your robot in order to do things you want so it's a really cool blend of mechanics for me it's unique uh, at some points uh, the theme is really great the theme is unique as well and uh, as it's a real-time game it doesn't feel like for example if, if you would play it for one hour and you would lose you would you would feel a little bit frustrated in this game if you lose you feel frustrated but on the other hand you just play it once again and then you play it once again if you want to play it more and more and more so you can play it many times in a row until you basically succeed a mission which is really cool and you can discuss on what things you should do next time better and how you should give clues out next time better no some some hints or something like that or what should we do it's just a really cool immersive cooperative play uh, all 
basically put in this box with a really cool uh, theme and feel and the mechanics of Rob O'Reilly and Hanabi put together and there are enough missions for you to play them all through and play them more because there's no story in the missions you basically play the mission through you try to succeed you try to get the best score and if you get an average score try this mission again and there are like epic scores and standard scores you can try the epic variant as well so there are so many um, missions and variants to try in this game that you will get a lot of experience a lot of replayability from this game so that's bomb squad i highly recommend this game and i think we should go to the dice rating i give this game eight dice out of ten